Uh, good morning, everybody. We've come to the end of another week, and we are still reading the book of Hebrews today, chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. And um, what I want to talk about in, in, in this chapter that, that God spoke to me as I read it, uh, put on my heart, um, is that there are, there are two approaches to, to, to the Christian life, to Christian living, if you will, that are frustrating, that actually hurt people, do great damage, and that are wrong. And those, those two approaches to Christian living, to living as a follower of Christ that are wrong and that are hurtful and that are sinful, uh, one of them is legalism. And most of you know what we mean by legalism, living according to a set of rules and all of that. And the other is what I like to call shallow believism. Shallow believism, or 90 years ago, a prominent theologian named Dietrich Bonhoeffer called cheap grace. Now, let me explain Hebrews 8 and then talk about those two approaches that are both wrong and sinful and harmful to people spiritually. Uh, chapter 8 of Hebrews, verses 1 and 2, he says, Now the main point in what has been said is this. He said, that if you want to get down to the nutshell, what I've been trying to say in these first seven chapters, it's this. We have such a high priest, Jesus, who has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister in the sanctuary in the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, not man. Now, remember, he's trying to demonstrate for these people who say they are believers, followers of Jesus, but are tempted because of persecution and other things to abandon the faith and return to Judaism. He's trying to show them if you do that, you're making a mistake because you're going back to something lesser that doesn't work, that Jesus is greater and he's the only answer. And he makes that point here that... Uh, Jesus entered the true tabernacle. In other words, when you read Hebrews and even the Old Testament, okay, Leviticus and elsewhere, the tabernacle, which later was replaced by the temple, was a copy of heaven, the throne. The sacrifices on earth, you know, animals were sacrificed. Jesus sacrificed himself. He's greater. Where he is at is greater. Everything about Jesus is greater. And the old covenant, he makes the point in here that the old covenant, the old system, the law, failed because people were not able to obey it sinlessly because of the weakness of their flesh. And sometimes the more they tried, the worse things got. In Jesus, we have a new covenant in which he changes us from the inside out when we become believers. He gives us a new spiritual life. We're born again. We come alive to God and have a new nature in addition to the sinful nature. And therefore, from the inside, out of that spiritual life, that new birth, that grace, that love, it makes us want to be loyal to Jesus. And out of love, we obey him and do right. That's the reason Jesus in the gospel said, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. He'll love your neighbor as yourself. And if you do that, that fulfills all of the law. You can never... Obey the law by trying to obey the law. But the more you love Jesus, the more good you will do, the more righteously you will live. So therefore, the new covenant is greater than the old covenant. That's the argument he makes. And in verses 8 and following, he drives that point home. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to read all of that. But, he, but he, he says some things about, like in verse 10, I will put my law into their minds and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. That's what I was just describing. He is quoting the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah. 
what um, what he writes here, you find in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. And Jeremiah then, and the author of Hebrews here, makes the point that a changed heart is how you live righteously, not through obeying the law. Now, I started off by talking about legalism and shallow believism, or as Bonhoeffer called it, cheap grace. Legalism is, here's a person, they say they become a believer, a follower of Christ, a Christian. They want to grow, they want to do right, their motivation is good. But they come up with all these rules, all these do's and don'ts, because they want to do right. And the problem is over time, they end up struggling more and never find freedom. They don't really trust the Holy Spirit and His ability to work in somebody's life and make them righteous. You have to have rules. And they tend to become judgmental. They tend to become negative. They tend to become harsh. And man, do they turn people off from Jesus. Legalism, it doesn't work, and it's unbiblical, and it hurts people. Now, shallow believism, cheap grace. I'm saved. Yeah, I haven't gone to church in 20 years. I'm growing. Yeah, I know I got drunk. Yeah, I know I've been sleeping with her for six months. But I prayed that prayer all those years ago. I accepted Jesus. I'm saved. I'm, he, he's in heaven. I know he didn't live, but, you know, when he was a kid, he got baptized. He's in heaven. Um, <clears throat> a few days ago, riding around in the car, I have a serious radio, and I was listening to some old country music, and a blast from the past came on, a song by Cal Smith from 1970. Two from 1972 called the title of the song, The Lord Knows I'm Drinking. And in the song, The Lord Knows I'm Drinking and Running Around. The, the scene is a bar. And there's a man there and he's drinking. And he's supposed to be a Christian, okay? He's in the bar and he's drinking. And there's this pretty young lass beside him and she's not his wife. And in the song, this woman who's a Christian Sunday school teacher named Mrs. Johnson comes there and she's talking to this guy. And in the song, the guy at the bar calls Mrs. Johnson a hypocrite and um, uh, self-righteous and just puts her down. And then later in the song, there's a lyric where the, where, where the guy in the bar says, the Lord knows I'm drinking, okay? And then he goes on and says, and the Lord knows I'm sinning and sinning ain't right. But me and the good Lord going to have a good talk tonight. <laughs> and then at one point he even says, and I'll put in a good word for you too, talking about Mrs. Johnson. And it's a catchy song and it was a big hit for Cal Smith. But that is the epitome of, easy belie uh, uh, of cheap grace and easy shallow believism. And it's wrong, it's unbiblical, it's of hell. And it damages people. And the point is this, brothers and sisters. Shallow believism and legalism both ruin people. Both are wrong. Both are unbiblical. When you are diligently drawing close to Jesus allowing His Word to richly dwell in you, walking in the fullness of the Spirit with a changed heart, you will grow, you will change, and you will live righteously. And that's my prayer for you. Hey, God bless you. I'll see you next Monday with another devotion. We'll be in the next chapter, chapter 9 of Hebrews. And this Sunday here at First Baptist, um, three worship services, 11 o'clock and 8.30 contemporary services, and in the middle, 9.45, our uh, traditional worship service. And you, if you live you know, out of state, you're not here in Rock Hill, you're not in this region, watch us online. 
Um, we have on our YouTube channel and Facebook page and so on uh, the sermon that I will be preaching. We pre-record it. You'll get to watch that. Or if you want to see the whole service, you can go to our website and under the Members tab. You'll, one of the drop-downs under the Members tab is live stream. And you can, you can choose to watch either the 945 traditional or the 11 o'clock contemporary service live if you'd like to do that. Hey, God bless you. I'll see you next time.